years of war have left their mark on Lebanon. Everyone has suffered in some way. But no single group has been so traumatized as the men, women and children who have been held in Hiam prison in Israeli-occupied South Lebanon. Behind the walls of this prison, a prison that can only be filmed secretly, more than 140 Lebanese citizens are currently held without trial, outside any legal framework. Psychotherapist Dr. Jamal Hafez works with the survivors of Hiam. He says research in the West shows that 15% of prisoners suffer from psychiatric disorders. It's almost six times higher in Hiam. 80% of prisoners from Hiam have psychological problems. There's something wrong here, something that doesn't make sense. In my opinion, the problem is Hiam itself. It's a place that destroys people. They try there to destroy the psychological makeup of the human being. Mahmoud Ramadan, who fought against the Israeli occupation of South Lebanon, spent seven years in Hiam. Three of them in solitary confinement in a small windowless cell. He was tortured with electric shocks throughout his detention, but most frequently after he masterminded a successful escape from Hiam. Three prisoners got away, but he was wounded in the minefield that surrounds Hiam and recaptured. After the explosion, I looked at my body. I saw I'd lost my hand. I touched my eye and realized I'd lost my eye. I saw other wounds on my body. After 15 or 30 minutes, I heard a voice saying, Who are you? Stay until the morning and die there. Then we'll come for you. Ramadan has been in and out of this psychiatric hospital since his release two years ago. Today, it is only medication that keeps him stable. Salim al Hoss is Lebanon's Prime Minister. Uh, Israel has no right to have a prison on Lebanese territory. You know, Khiam is a tragedy as far as Lebanon is concerned. We find it appalling that the international community has not moved uh, against you know, the, the very existence of such a prison on, in Lebanon, on Lebanese territory, on occupied Lebanese territory. South Lebanon is a land of farmers. Simple people whose lives were brutally disrupted when Palestinian guerrillas set up a state within a state on Israel's northern border. In 1978, Israeli troops invaded Lebanon and 21 years later remained there in violation of United Nations resolutions. We think that uh, Resistance to occupation is only a legitimate right of any people that has a territory, any, any part of their territory under occupation. And that's why do we take the official position of uh, supporting the resistance movement politically and morally. Because we think this is a legitimate right of the people of Lebanon. الو مرحبا مين عم يحكي محمد صفا محمد صفا a former teacher heads an organization that works for Lebanese detainees he calculates that 100 of the 181 Lebanese currently held by Israel have nothing to do with the conflict in South Lebanon he knows every case in detail 14 prisoners have died under torture in Hiam. Some have lost their memory. Most have lost their eyesight. Once you're in there, you're done for. When you leave, you're born again. Today, Safa's greatest concern is Ali Taubi, who was 14 when he was put into solitary confinement. He's told his mother he's getting electric shocks. Rabbi Sharur was also 14. His brother had refused to fight with Israel. 
Hassan Hamoud was 14. He was accused of helping the resistance and lost 13 years of his life. 11 of those who are found now in LPM are youngsters who were taken in when they were 14 years and 15 years old. 11 of them. There is uh, one woman, 70 years old, detained there also. Al Abda Malkani was arrested in her village together with her 75 year old husband, Hassan Syed. He was released after severe beatings damaged his sight and now lives with his children, among them his son Mustafa. My family has nothing to do with resistance. I was interpreter with the United Nations. But Israel want to force me to work and to fight with them against our Lebanese people. I escaped from there. After two months, they catch my father and my mother and they put it in the Kiyan prison. Although a number of operations in Lebanese hospitals appear to have saved Hassan Syed's sight, he is consumed by fear for his wife, who is in poor health, and by anger and incomprehension at their arrest. I'm a farmer. I don't even know how to use a hunting gun. I can't even shoot birds. I'm a farmer. I plant wheat, tobacco and onions. I plant, that's what I do. Me? Use a Kalashnikov. I don't even know what it is. But this simple man was locked in a tiny cell with a dozen other prisoners like those photographed here by the only journalist ever allowed inside Khiam and subjected to treatment like this. They put a hood on my head, handcuffed me and took me for interrogation. They started torturing me and saying what they wanted to say. You collaborated with the resistance. You have weapons. You hide the resistance. I said no. They started to beat me and my wife. Worse, they shaved her head. When someone curses your women, you go crazy. Israel denies any responsibility for Khiam. It is, they say, under the control of their Lebanese proxies, the so-called South Lebanon Army. They're very close allies. Ce n'est pas possible. It isn't possible to have a Lebanese infrastructure like Hiam Prison in South Lebanon. We all know that South Lebanon lacks any infrastructure. Donc, Soyons sérieux. Let's be serious. Uh, et soyons And let's be scientific about it. Uh, L'infrastructure qui, qui existe à Khiam, c'est un Israeli. travail israélien. En plus, Many of my patients, patients have seen ils ont Israelis vu and heard et entendu pas Hebrew. mal des gens israéliens qui parlaient même en hébreu, vous voyez, qui, qui dirigeaient les gens, les investigateurs, et qui, qui, qui donnaient des ordres. But the spirit of the Lebanese resistance has not been broken by Khiam as shown by this attack on an SLA position in May this year. <laughs> Fighters like these are pledged to continue their attacks until South Lebanon is free of Israeli forces. Within the year, according to the current timetable, But Lebanese, like Mahmoud Ramadan, will always carry the mark of Yam with them. Sooner or later, the wounds will heal, even in the worst cases, and ordinary life will resume. But with very few exceptions, the trauma remains.